Good evening, culture lovers, oi oi, and welcome to Bushel on the Box, the 10-minute TV show that carries more weight than Otzi's underwired support bra. Let's start with a quick catch-up on what's been happening while I was off. Jeremy Hunt presented a high-tax kamikaze budget that suggested the government have signed a suicide pact with Talk TV. Michael Sheen's bonkers English-hating fantasy The Way conked out with the lowest BBC One drama finale viewing figures ever recorded. And Jonathan Ross's interview with John Squire and Liam Gallagher was so awkward, Ross must have been praying for a power cut. Squire was so monosyllabic, he suspected rigor mortis was setting in. He obviously wasn't being paid by the word. He couldn't storm out, it was all he could do to keep awake. If he was on drugs, they were the wrong ones. John Squire's a terrific guitarist, but before his next TV interview, he should be force-fed a gallon of whatever Joe Biden was drinking before the State of the Union address. Jacked up like Joe, he could steal the show. Jonathan Ross presided over another ill-thought-out mess with his Oscars show on ITV. Meant to provide a comical commentary, his panel were witless nobodies with nothing to say, as funny as piles on a bike ride. The only thing that could have made it flatter was a guest appearance from John Squire. Oscar host Jimmy Kimmel had a naked bloke on stage with him at one point, and ITV still managed to find the biggest bollocks of the night. Yeah, John Kenner waltzed on naked, except for the result envelope he was using to protect his modesty. Never have the Oscars pushed the envelope more. We haven't seen anything like that since the late Keith Chegwin on The Naked Jungle. Keith was nominated for a BAFTA for that. Unfortunately for his wife, it was best short. He could have done that Kenner stunt of a postage stamp. Second class, obviously. God knows why ITV think we care enough about the Oscars to watch four hours of it at silly o'clock live. Hollywood is now a pretentious, po-faced and superficial alternative reality where the overpaid and under-talented tell us what to think while picking up their $170,000 Oscar gift bag. $170,000? That's nearly 133,000 quid a bag. Strew for 130 k that's enough for two packs of first class stamps and a South Western Railway annual season ticket. The Academy seems as confused as Al Pacino did. The biggest faux pas was the lack of an Oscar nomination for Margot Robbie and also for Barbie director Greta Gerwig. The greatest joy was studying the faces in the audience. Oh, he's still alive? How much work has she had done? Any more facelifts and she'd have a beard. Is he using air dye or creosote? Is this an audience or open casket day at Hollywood Forever Cemetery? Kimmel was a decent host, a lot better than James Franco for sure, but he's no Billy Crystal. His best line was off script. Told that Donald Trump was criticising his hosting online, Kimmel responded, isn't it past your jail time? This was his worst scripted joke. Interesting fact about Killian Murphy's name. It's pronounced Killian when he does drama, and when he does comedy, it's Sillian. Ouch. What Christmas cracker did they find that in? Here's what's up with the Oscars. Films are too long these days. There's a heavy bias against comedy and the Academy's internal voting method is iffier than George Galloway's postal votes. Then there's the endless virtue signaling. As the cinema's standing has diminished, so its self-importance has shot through the roof. From this year, films won't be nominated for Best Picture if they don't meet two out of four rules concerning minority casting, female leads, hard of hearing casts and crews and LBTQWYZ interns. What a load of cobblers. What difference does it make if the best boy is wearing a hearing aid or the intern is shagging Messi the Border Collie? All that matters is how good the film is! They're risk adverse too. You can say with a degree of certainty that June Part 2 and Gladiator 2 will be the big winners next year. Getting behind smaller budget films and building new talent would be an investment for the future. I don't know what's worse. Four hours of the Oscar or the three hours of curry we get every bloody week. What would be in Roy Cropper's gift bag? A tepid hot pot? Some badly stitched knickers? 
and half a pint of flat Newton Ridley Best Bitter. The Oscars history of missing great movies goes all the way back to It's a Wonderful Life. The top seven films snubbed by the Academy, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, The Shining, The Shawshank Redemption, Reservoir Dogs, Psycho, The Wolf of Wall Street and The Terminator, which seems more like a premonition of tomorrow with every passing week. Do you ever look at the strange misshapen penises on shows like Embarrassing Bodies and Naked Attraction and wonder what the owners did to piss off Yuri Geller? Rupert Murdoch is pulling talk TV off air after two years of hemorrhaging millions. Murdoch bet a king's ransom on it becoming our equivalent of America's Fox News. Instead, it's been a dismal failure, trounced by the far more successful GB News, which wiped the floor with Sky News in Budget Week and has more genuine presenters. Whether you agree or disagree with Nigel Farage, you know that A, he believes everything he says, he isn't adopting positions just to generate publicity, and B, he is open to debating with guests with all sorts of views. I don't think British viewers want the kind of rabid partisan broadcasting associated with Fox and its most frenzied. In truth, I don't even think we have any appetite for 24-hour news here. The BBC News Channel averages around 70,000 viewers, and even GB News loses money. I reckon they could diversify and give us shows the BBC and ITV can't, like genuine news-based satire. They're missing a trick. Can we talk about boxing freak shows? Yes, I cheered when Joshua knocked out Francis Nagano in round two the other night. But AJ is a pro. Nagano isn't. He's an MMA fighter. And this was his second boxing bout. These joke fights generate fortunes, but they diminish the noble art. Now, influencer Jake Paul is taking on the great Mike Tyson, who's 30 years older than him. Iron Mike will knock him Sparko, but I don't want to watch it. What next? Frank Bruno versus Ron Chopper Harris? Lennox Lewis coming out of retirement to fight a weather girl? Let's see Lloyd Hannigan versus Seaside Southpaw, SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah, Victor to face the winner of Trump v Biden. By the way, I worked out that for Naganu, MMA stands for multi-millionaire again. There are so many iffy draws in boxing now, they don't give you a program, they give you a pulse coupon. <laughs> Two quick TV questions. Would we take Brian Cox seriously if his first name was Isaac? And should John Squire's next single be You Say It Best When You Say Nothing At All? Just time for one vintage separated at birth. Step forward Oxford East MP Annalise Dodds and Flegel. One a strangely dressed character lost in a wacky world of fantasy. The other is in the banana splits. Oi, oi, that's your lot. I'll be back in a day or two with my review of Guy Ritchie's The Gentleman, Celebrity Why Bother and much more.